Hello, welcome to Kintsugi Talks episode 5 and today's topic is something that I am so 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 excited to get into. This was another requested topic to talk about. If you want to send in ideas or topics for me to talk about please make sure to follow me on social media because every now and then I will put posts with questions in the caption and even in the stories with the polls and stuff so please make sure you're following me on social media so that you could be able to send in your request but today's episode we are going to talk about what the bible says about the mind and mental illness and without further ado Let's get started. Now, there's no direct talk about mental illness other than in Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 28. I will be reading from the English Standard Version. And the verse reads, The Lord will strike you with madness and blindness and confusion of mind. This shows that mental illness can be one of the results of rebellion. We see that that verse is brought to life in the story of King Nebuchadnezzar in the book of Daniel chapter 4 verses 31 and 32. The scripture reads, While the words were still in the king's mouth, There fell a voice from heaven. O King Nebuchadnezzar, to you it is spoken. The kingdom has departed from you. And you shall be driven from among men, and your dwelling shall be with the beasts of the field. And you shall be made to eat grass like an ox. And seven periods of time shall pass over you, until you know that the Most High rules the kingdom of men and gives it to whom he will. Here, we see that mental illness can be the direct result of God humbling a group of people or just one person. It could also be the result of simply living on this side of heaven. Just like a person could be physically ill, a person's chemical composition can be unbalanced. Mental illness can also be the result from poor decisions, as it was for Jonah. Now, I'm going to be doing a quick, like, rundown of the story of Jonah, but I do recommend that you actually take the time to read it for yourself in the Bible, because it is a very powerful story. Now, Jonah was a prophet of God that disobeyed him. He endured a terrible storm just to be swallowed by a huge fish where he remained there for three days. Now, the fish then spat out Jonah on dry land and he then went to fulfill the assignment that God had told him to do in the first place. At this point, he was depressed, as it shows in Jonah chapter 4, verses 1 through 3. And it reads... But it displeased Jonah exceedingly, and he was angry. And he prayed to the Lord and said, O Lord, is not this what I said when I was yet in my country? That is why I made haste to flee to Tarshish, for I knew that you are a gracious God and are merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and relenting from disaster. Therefore now, O Lord, please take my life from me, For it is better for me to die than to live. Now, as you can see, Jonah just had enough. He was at a point in his depression where he just wanted to die because he found that it was better to be dead than to be alive. If he'd obeyed immediately in the beginning, Jonah wouldn't have had to suffer such horrific circumstances. Mental illness can develop following trauma as well, as we see in the book of Ruth, chapter 1. Naomi had grieved the death of her husband and both of her sons, which were her only children. She was living destitute in a foreign land. She then returned home with her daughter-in-law, Ruth. 
life and depression impacted her so much that people couldn't even physically recognize her. In chapter 1, verses 19 through 21, it reads, So the two of them went on until they came to Bethlehem. And when they came to Bethlehem, the whole town was stirred because of them. And the woman said, Is this Naomi? She said to them, Do not call me Naomi. Call me Mara, for the Almighty has dealt very bitterly with me. I went away full, and the Lord has brought me back empty. Why call me Naomi when the Lord has testified against me and the Almighty has brought calamity upon me? Now, she's saying this about her name Naomi because her name actually means peace and Mara means bitter. I'm now going to be moving on to sharing stories of mental illness in the Bible. I'll be sharing three of them. The first one we find with the prophet Elijah. We find it in 1 Kings chapter 19 verse 4. And the verse reads, But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a broom tree. And he asked that he might die, saying, It is enough now. O Lord, take away my life, for I am no better than my father's. He remained in this condition for 40 days and 40 nights, depressed and unable to meet his basic personal needs. The next story of mental illness in the Bible, we're going to talk about David. Now, David was treated as the least of his father's sons. He was threatened by the king to whom he was very loyal to. He was betrayed by his own son because he wanted his seat on the throne. Now, we know David to be the writer of the book of Psalm. Now, Psalm is filled with many songs of lament that reflect his pain and depression. One psalm in particular that is a great example of this is psalm chapter 6 verses 6 through 7 and it reads i am weary with my moaning every night i flood my bed with tears i drench my couch with my weeping my eyes waste away because of grief it grows weak because of all my foes The last story that shows mental illness in the Bible is the story of Martha. Now, Martha was overwhelmed by the demands of being a hostess, and she grew angry towards her sister, Mary, who sat at the feet of Jesus instead of helping prepare a meal. We see this in the book of Luke, chapter 10, verses 40 and 42. And the scripture reads, But Martha was distracted with much serving, And she went up to him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Tell her then to help me. But the Lord answered her, Martha, Martha, you are anxious and troubled about many things, but one thing is necessary. Mary has chosen the good portion, which will not be taken away from her. As you can see, the Bible teaches that we're all depraved, which means to be corrupt, wicked, or perverted. But it doesn't mean that every person is absolutely wicked and evil as they could possibly be. My intellect, spiritual desires, and my body has been affected and distorted by sin, while total depravity means that sin has affected every facet of my being, and my being is made up of my body, my mind, and my soul. We live in earthly bodies that don't function as God had originally intended for them to be. Mental illness is not an invention from psychiatrists, the government, or a social construct. It's part of and comes with a fallen and sinful world. 
We are all both body and soul. It should be of no surprise that we become sick mentally along with being sick physically, even though we can't see mental illness. Even if my thinking is biblical, is faith-filled, and God-honoring, my physical symptoms of my mental illness won't go away. In order to be better understanding of all of this, we have to treat people with mental illness as a whole person, one with a body and soul. Everyone that struggles with this can equally exercise our faith in the promises of God and in the knowledge, wisdom, and skill that was placed in the minds of doctors who are literal gifts from God. That is it for today's episode, episode five, where we talked about what the Bible says about the mind and mental illness. I hope that you guys really took in everything that I said and really did a lot of studying for for this episode because this is something that really means a lot to me. This is something that as an advocate for mental health, mental illness awareness in and outside the Christian space that we really need to get across and for people to have a better understanding of Now, if you enjoyed this episode, please make sure to leave a review, share this episode with your friends, and also on Spotify, there's like a little thing where I'll put a question of other topics you want me to talk about. Please feel free to answer me back on that, and if you follow me on social media, you can send me a DM, and you can also interact with me there. Until then, I will see you in the next episode, and God bless.